Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is ITS 128, and uh, we're in about week seven, and uh, we're uh, gonna today we're gonna cover the last half of chapter four. And so uh, let's uh, open up La Lima. Here we are, and um, this is uh, we are uh, week seven or so, and uh, we are doing uh, mathematical functions, strings and objects. And uh, the video I'm making right, right now will go right here. And uh, so cover these sections. We wanna uh, uh, cover these quizzes. So I'm gonna do that in this video. And then in the, in the next video, which I'm gonna make right after this one, uh, I'm gonna uh, go over these programming projects. So that way I'll split it up. And if you've already done the quizzes, you can go right to that, okay. So, um, so let's open up Pearson, and here we are. And uh, so we're we're right here, week uh, October thirteenth. And uh, so let's go right into section four point five. And uh, so today we're going to learn learn the concept of of objects and. Uh, Objects are are just um, they're just uh, variables or places where you store store uh, variables or values, but also uh, objects have uh, methods uh, can have methods connected with them, and uh, the the methods are how you can op operate on or manipulate the object the values in the object. So. Um, that, that might not, not have made sense, but uh, to start out here, we, uh, uh, in Python, a number is actually an object, and a string is an object, and everything's an object. And you can kind of think of, of an object as, uh, and, and, okay, and, and each object has an ID and a, and a type. And you can kind of think of, of an ID of an object as like its memory location. And you can kind of think of um, the type of an object uh, uh, the uh, the value um, the value itself of the object is going to be the uh, uh, the value that's stored in the memory location, but then you also have a type which which uh, specifies how you interpret um, the the value, and um, uh, so uh, so every object has an ID, so you, you can access the Objects ID and you can access the objects type, of course. Um, when you run a program a second time, the ID will likely be different, but of course the type should not. The type sh the type should be the same. Um, we aren't going to refer to that too much more, um, but uh, you uh, these functions become. Um, useful when you're writing more complex programs and you're trying to trace through, figure out some obscure bug or poss possibly that you have in your program. Um, now, um, and you refer to objects by the name that you, you call them. So, you know, we have an object here at S. Now, um, objects also can have methods associated with them and that depends on the type. And so, um, so a string type, like here we have this variable or this object, this S, and uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of methods, a bunch of string methods that are associated along with uh, a string object, and, um, and they do stuff. Uh, one, like for example, this one, dot lower, what that does is that will, this thing will be uh, S, but all lowercase, and this thing here, is S, but all uppercase. So, and you know, there's all kinds of, of string methods. In fact, we're gonna to refer to string methods a lot in this section. So I'm gonna just do a search here on Python string methods and uh, pop up one of these links here. And so here it looks like, here's a list of, of a whole bunch of Python string methods, which we're gonna refer to, uh, learn about, and I'm gonna use this as, as a reference when I'm taking, my, taking the quizzes. So, um, so let's, let's move on here. Uh, here's the first quiz. 
And um, let's see, let me, um, I have a, okay. Um, okay, let's, let's look at the first question. Okay, uh, given a variable s, given a variable s, which is a string, write an expression whose value is a string that is identical in all the letters, except that it's uppercase. So in other words, if f s were this, if s were equal to this, then the value of this expression would be this. And so basically all you have to do is you just have to do this s dot, this thing we just, we just learned right here, which is this, uh, this s dot upper. See, if, if s is just welcome, that s dot upper is all caps. s dot lower is, is um, all lowercase. And in this list of uh, string functions here, we're talking about uh, s, this upper, string upper, and string lower. Returns lowercase, returns uppercase. So that's how we're gonna refer to this. We can also click on it and see, see more information like this, but, uh, but this here should be fine. All right, so, um, so, that, so the answer to this first one would be, something like s dot upper, okay? You can try that and see if it works. Okay, here we're doing the same thing, s, but we wanna do, if s is this, we wanna do it all lowercase. So that's the other one, whatever. Okay, that's the other one. Okay, so, so you should be able to get that quiz pretty easily. Should watch the video note. Uh, here we're learning about. Uh, here it goes goes through, and there's a bunch of other. It, it gives examples for a bunch of other of these methods. A bunch of other ones here. And uh, here's a bunch of them. Uh, this this just returns true or false if uh, if it's if the string is alphanumeric, and there has to be at least one character, so it cannot be empty. Uh, but as long as the string is at least one one character, you can do dot is al num, and what that and that will end up being true if it is alphanumeric, and it will be false if it's not alphanumeric. So it's got to be either a letter or a number. Uh, this is for if you want to know if it's just letters. This is this is um, if you want to know if it's just numbers. These are digits. Uh, this is letters and digits. These are just letters. Um, this will tell you if it's a Python identifier, uh, and you know these are you know the the Python um, sort of reserved words or the ones that mean something, like like an equal sign or a plus sign or uh, or, or or the word print or the word int. You know those are Python identifiers. I think that's what that means. Um, anyway, we can uh, let's let's look at a Python is identifier is identifier valid identifier. Python true false 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 true. Oh, it just means if it's a valid variable. So it's not what I said earlier. It means if it's a valid variable. See, these are, so you can't have a space in it, can't start with a number, but that's legal. Valid identifier, okay. Uh, so it's, uh, so that would be useful if you're, you know, reading in a, uh, reading in another program and you were testing to see if the, uh, See if the uh, syntax is correct. All right, um, uh, is lower will just return if all the characters are lowercase. Upper uh, returns if this if it's 
characters are only uh, white space characters, which includes return, tab, space, and so on. All right, uh, what's next? String methods. Okay, write an expression that's true if all the letters are lowercase. Well, that's like is lower or something like that. Let me go back to here. Is, is lower. Checks if all of the alphas in the string are lowercase. Yes, that's it. So that's something like it, uh, oops. S is lower, something like that. You can uh, try that out. Upper is upper is supper. I supper. All right. Um, what's next? Okay, so there's other, oh, here's searching for substrings. So um, here, this is just tests to see if, 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 the, if this is the, um, if that's how, how, a, how a string ends. This is tests to see if the beginning of a string is a certain substring. This uh, will, will return the position of a certain substring if it exists, if it's in the, sub, if, if it's in the string or it returns a minus one if it's not even in the string at all. Uh, and this, this, this returns the lowest index. And if there's more than one in there, uh, this is gonna return a different high, the, a higher, the, the highest index. And this actually counts how many there are of a substring. All these are substrings, can be substrings. So, uh, so let's say we have this sentence, welcome to Python. Uh, does it end with thon? Yes, it does. Does it start with good? No, it does not. Is, is the word come in there? Yeah, it is right here. It's uh, zero, one, two, three. Starts at the third position. Yeah, that's that. Um, how about is the word become in here? Nope. Uh, what is the rightmost occurrence of the letter O in this sentence? And it's would be this one, which if you add it up, zero, one, two, three, four, zero, two, this is 15 right here. And how many O's are in here? Well, three. One, two, three. Did I miss, I, this goes down farther, doesn't it? Oh yeah, so you should just test yourself here. By the way, I did this earlier, and it's, it, it's this program is not right. I mean, this should be um, this here: s left bracket colon minus one uh, right bracket right bracket. Uh, that is the string from the beginning all the way to the to the second of the last character. So this is the entire string without the last character. That's what this s colon thing is. Uh, and dot find is going to return an index. And so if some number doesn't mean anything, it, this is a incorrect, this is an, in, this doesn't make any sense. So it should, it should actually be, uh, it should actually be, um, if s space colon minus one, dot find last character is um, I don't know greater than or equal to zero or something so here I'll here so it, it's the right answer is um, first you want to read it in then you want to grab the last character then you want to do this test and if that's, if it's, if it's um, greater than or equal to zero, then it, then it exists. See, this looks at all the characters but the last character. So if it's greater than or equal to zero, then it exists. And otherwise, it'll, it only appears once, which is the last character.
So this says I did it, but if you actually try to run this, it's not going to work because this this if statement's wrong. So anyway, um, what's next? All right, let's go through these uh, quiz quiz questions here. There's five of them. The first one is. Write an expression that evaluates to true if it starts with S starts with P. Something like that. So it's this starts with st st starts with check if a string starts with a specified string. So something like that. Uh, what's next? <clears throat> Returns false if it begins with that. <clears throat> okay, so if it begins with that, it's going to be starts with ECTO. Okay, so that's that's going to return true if it starts with e ECTO and returns false. Um, Uh, for anything else and but we want it the opposite so we can just make this the opposite by just putting the opposite in front of it write an expression that returns true if it ends with ism so uh, you know s dot s dot and then uh, you can do the ends with ends with ends with here the string ends with this particular suffix. All right, so you, you can do that one. Assume a sentence is a variable, and this is a sentence. Okay, so this is an example of a sen sentence is a variable and is the variable name. And for an example, it's 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 like this. So it's got some it's got some words with some spaces in there, single spaces in there. It's got a period at the end. And what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to, uh, we have a variable called second word, and we want to set that equal to the second word. So like if it's this one, it's going to set second word equal to is. If it is this one, it's also going to set it equal to is coincidentally. Okay, so, um, so let's, uh, so I'm going to pull up. Uh, it's time to write to write some programs here. So it's, that's, we've got to bring up. So let me, first of all, let me do um, CMD. And I got the command. And, I, and I'm going to start something on the desktop here. So let me pull up my favorite browser or my favorite editor, which is this. And uh, so I'm just going to start out with a um, uh, print hello world. And I'm going to do save as um, on the desktop. Save as test.py. Okay, so there it is right at there. You see it. And let me, uh, and the desktop is uh, properties location. So this is my desktop. This is the so I'm going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do CD paste. And so now I'm at the desktop, so I can do Python test.py and it runs. Hello world. Okay, so now I've got my test, my test bed, and I'm going to, um, I want to, so let's see what I want to do now. Let me put this down for a moment. This can be put down, so let's put this down. So I wanna make it be, um, oh, the second word. Okay, so um, so I'm gonna use a, um, is there a, join is here. Is there a split, oh, split is here, split. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, split. Okay, so, Here's how split works. You have a separator, and then you have, well, this is a maximum, so, and, and that's optional. So the in, in most inner bracket is optional. Uh, if, you, if you're gonna say a separator, that's optional also, uh, because uh, otherwise, um, 
uh, uh, it'll just assume a space character, which is actually what we're looking for first. So, okay, so here's an example. We have, we have a text that looks like that. And if we print dot split, it's gonna be, it's gonna come out like that. Here, I'll show you. If I do uh, uh, Python test equals now is the time. Uh, and I do uh, print test split. It prints this. Now is the time. So if I can say uh, second equals test split parentheses, the counting from zero, zero one. So one is the second one like that. If I do that equals the, the first one, not the zero from the first one. And then when I print second, I get is. Okay, so that's what I want. Now, uh, problem is, let's say that uh, <clears throat> test equals, let's say this string test is equal to now is period. Uh, now when we do uh, print test split one, it prints is period. So I don't want the period. So I want to hack off the period. Let's, let's just make the string and we hack off the period. Why can I do that? Because it says here, the string consisting of words separated by single space characters with a period at the end. So I can always assume there's going to be a period at the end. So that means that I could probably do something like um, uh, print test dot not test, not test, but test from enough from the beginning to the second to the last character. So that hacks off that last period. And then I can split based on a space and grab the first, the first, the second uh, word. So here we go. So we have is without the period. Okay, so what are you supposed to do? You're just supposed to write a, it's called sentence. It's not called test. So that's really all you have to do. In this, in this example here, I, call, I use the variable name is called test, test, test. And in this one here, the variable name is called sentence. But everything else is, should be the same. Uh, test equals well, never mind. broccoli is delicious. Broccoli, broccoli is delicious. Delicious. And I do, oh, I typed it in wrong. Anyway, you can uh, do that one. The last question here in this quiz is, write a sequence of statements that finds the first comma in a string associated with, the ver with, with a variable line. Okay, so, so it's, a, it's a string and, and it's called line. And we want to, uh, 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 have a word, have a variable called clause that is the first part, part of the, uh, the line. The, the line is going to have a comma in it someplace. Uh, so, um, so it's like if, um, you know, line might equal, um, you know, now is the time or something. And so we would want, um, we would want clause to equal 
now is. See? So that's all. So, so, so that's, that's what they're asking us to do. But we're supposed to write a program to do it, a short little program. Or it doesn't really need to be a sequence of statements. It can just be... Um, So let's say we've got line equals um, if one equals no if if j equals no, if a equals four. Um, a times two equals eight. Okay, so that's a sentence. It's got a comma in it. And we want to set clause equal to everything up to the comma. So uh, let, first of all, let's, well, let's use the same thing, same trick we did before. Um, uh, it's a uh, line um, split. But this time we're going to split on a comma. So this does that, and we want the first one. So it's just that, I think. Print clause if a equals four. Okay, yeah, that is the first. That's the clause. Okay, so um, uh, it's the zit clause equals line. Okay. We have line, and we're supposed to write a sequence of statement that finds the first comma in the string variable line and associates the variable clause to the portion of the line up to and equal to the. So it finds the. Okay, so we should probably. Okay, um, you know, you know, another way we can we can do it something like this. Um, uh, um, uh, comma equals line dot find comma. Does that work? Uh, print comma. Oh, print comma. Okay, it's 13. Okay, so that's right. And then we want um, uh, print line bracket nothing colon 13 and colon see what this does yeah that does it too okay so anyway uh you you I, that's a couple ways of doing it and you can use whichever one you want or something else all right what's next uh all right um 6.2 converting strings Okay, so um, here are some methods that actually uh, change change the what what is the string and returns a different string. It returns another string, but it's it's usually something to do with the case or uh, this 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 capitalizes the first character of every word. No, this ca capitalizes the first character of the set of what you passed in of the string. This makes all the characters of the string lowercase. This makes all of them uppercase. This makes them like a title, which should be capitalized at the first letter of each word. This uh, swap case, that, that makes all the uppercase letters lowercase and all the lowercase letters uppercase. You know, kind of like when you fix, when you have the caps lock on accidentally, you type a bunch of stuff. Um, this is a replace, so it's gonna replace, you know, you remember that the, there's a variable name before here, and then dot replace, and this finds all of the old, this finds all of these strings and replaces it with this string. Uh, this does the same thing except for it limits the number of times it does it. So here we have, see you can, you, know, you can do it this way. So this takes this string, which is A, B, A, B, A, B, and it replaces A, B with E, T, but it only does two of them. So it's, the, it's this was A, B, A, B, but then the last A, B is still there. See? 
this, this is the fixing the isn't right. There should be a title in between there. Yeah, there, there's, this, uh, this is the first edition, you can tell, of Bugs. Buggy book. All right, what's this one? Let's see, question one. Given, let's see, let me just check here. Okay, um, never mind. All right, given variables first and last, uh, each of which is associated with a string representing a first and last name, respectively, write an expression whose value is the full name, last, comma, first. So first is Alan, unless it's all lowercase, and the last is Turing. Then your expression would write Turing, comma, Alan where you notice it's capitalized. The first letters of the word of each name is capitalized. And notice it's got no spaces. All right. So here we've got our first name is Florine, and the last name is Fortescue. Uh, it's gonna be Fortescue Florine, and the Fortescue's first name is capitalized. So, uh, you know, you can, let's, uh, try some stuff out. Uh, let's say um, uh, last equals Joe and no, let's do first equals Joe and last equals low. And uh, we want to do um, print. We want to do um, last dot capital capitalize plus a comma plus first capital capitalize so yeah low joe okay so you should be able to do that. What's the next one? Write an expression whose value is the same as the string, but reverse case. Reversed case. Well, that's just, that's just swap case. Swap, swap case. Swap the uppercase characters with the lowercase characters and vice versa. S dot swap case. All right, uh, I'm 4.6.2, I think that's it. Let me, um, uh, you should go through the rest of this because it should help you with your project. But these are some additional uh, methods, stripping the white space characters from the string. These are all the white space characters. Uh, they mean things, uh, this tab, uh, this is a re return character, the new line character, I'm not sure what F is. Uh, but but anyway, uh, L strip strips off the the uh, left white space character stripped. Right, you know the beginning. This is the right. The, so the ending white space characters are stripped, and strip just strips both of them. So see, this is a. Uh, Well, anyway, yeah, so uh, so that's that, and uh, make sure you, oh, here's some case studies, and this one, guessing birthdays. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and then there's this format function um, where, where um, you, you know, it's 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 kind of like round, except for you can format all kinds of stuff. This is round, which will take a number, a floating point number, and round it to a particular 
number of places to the right of the decimal point. Uh, but also there's this format and, and, and it's, you can format, you have much more flexibility in the way you format. You have this format specifier. And so, uh, you know, you can do like 10 spaces with two, two digits, 10 digits, two digits to the right of the decimal point or, or, or up to 10, which means it's going to uh, right justify it. And, um, and so, uh, and so here it goes through all the examples. This is a, a scientific notation and shows the different ones. You can do percentage, it uses a percent sign. Uh, you can do this justification. So it'll be, you know, left justified or right justified. That can be handy uh, and so on. And you can format strings also, well, special ways. This, this is lists all the specifiers. And so that can be helpful sometime. And you can always just search the web and find these. Uh, here's uh, uh, doing a little graphics, the turtle graphics, and uh, this this uh, gives you uh, adds some methods, some some new methods that you can learn, uh, showing you how to draw these uh, these objects, these polygon shapes, and it shows you how to do that. And you can you can look at that, try it out. Uh, color this is how you fill fill shapes. This is simple now, but you know, uh, and you know, you just start building up on things and um, moving them around and so on. So uh, that covers the uh, the quiz uh, the quizzes uh, for the remainder of the quizzes in chapter four. So that should help you out. So I'm gonna uh, sign off now, and uh, the next video coming right after this will be working on the projects. So thanks for watching.